Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, today, or better now, we are going to see easy setup of IP-based Capsman with link failover and uh, Caps Monitor. Uh, some words about me. My name is George Osagiridis. You can call me George, it's easier for you. Um, I came from uh, South Europe. Probably you don't know my country, but I can show you <laughs> on the map. I was born in Cyprus. It's a small island uh, below Turkey, near Greece. I can speak English and Greek. I have been working in the industry since 2006 uh, as an IPSP consultant, internet telephony service provider consultant, voice engineer, uh, system and network engineer, uh, administrator, internet security consultant, ISP and wireless ISP consultant. Okay. Uh, I am a certified consultant in Greece since 2011 and uh, certified trainer since 2012. I, am, I hold also a certification of uh, security, cert security certification of uh, CyberOM that makes UTMs. And I have graduated from uh, the School of uh, Science Applied Computing in Sheffield. Uh, I'm providing microtech training on site because remote is not allowed consultancy on-site or remote in Greece and Cyprus, this is European region, and uh, worldwide as well. Okay, about me. This presentation objective, first thing, we are going to introduce the IP-based Capsman even for new users. Uh, there are many presentations about Capsman, but uh, there are many features uh, explained and uh, people are getting confused even, uh, I mean, especially if they are uh, new users. So we are trying to make an easy setup. Uh, at this point I have to thank, thanks Aldis for some of the slides. And, uh, then we are going to a small routed na network. We are going to set up a small routed network using a routing protocol. And uh, the CAPS communicating with the CAPS man by redundant connection. So if a connection fails, uh, the, the, the CAP will communicate with the CAPS man uh, by an alternative path, second connection, secondary connection. Uh, monitor of the CAPS, you can get the notification when it goes down something that is important. Probably if you run a small wireless ISP and you are running uh, 10 base stations, one base station can have 50 users. If it goes down, you receive 50 complaints. You have to, to know it before your customers, right? Do you agree? <laughs> okay. It's not funny, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, so, features of Capsman, uh, it's centralized management of router OS access points. Uh, this means that uh, we have many access points and we have something that we call it uh, controller. It's a, other brands may call it controller. It's able to control the authentications done who, who can log into our access point? Who cannot log in? We can have dual band, means we can have two wireless cards on a, an access point. We can manage both of them. We can run Capsman for uh, uh, Mac, I mean layer two, and IP layer. So we can have the, our access points connected on one switch and without any uh, IP configuration, we can manage them. Uh, it uh, supports certificates, so uh, the authentication from a CAP 
to a Capsman can be, the, I mean, the connection can be authenticated, especially on layer two. Uh, we can have full and local uh, data for the working mode, means the access point, if it has a connection to the internet, it can use its own connection. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have, we can uh, central uh, use it to the control. Uh, you can we can tunnel it to the controller. That way, we can also enable uh, roaming because all the access points will be uh, connected through the tunnels to the controller. So the user has one IP and moves from access point to access point. Uh, Radius Mac authentication, custom configuration support. Okay, this is what I'm, I'm going to explain before we start. Uh, what is CAP, what is CAPS, what is CAPS, what is access point, what's a router? Probably it sounds simple, but. Okay, CAPSman means controlled access point system manager. It is a micro tick router. CAP, it's controlled access point. It's a micro tick router. It's not just an access point. It is still a, a router. And CAPS, we refer to many micro tick routers that are controlled access points. We, they are still access points that have router functionalities built in. Okay, requirements for CAPSman. We need uh, a PC or a router board. Uh, version 6.11 and latest use the latest possible, so you can see the fewer bugs on it. And we need wireless FP package installed and enabled. On CAPS, it's a little bit similar, but we need also a wireless card, of course, else how can we transmit our signal? Uh, and can somebody tell me why do we need this? Why? That's right, okay. If we have a level three, we can run bridge mode on the, on the wireless card. This will allow only one client to connect. If we run access point bridge, we can have many connect on it. Okay, Capsman version one and version two. From 6.23, that is the current version, if I'm not wrong, until yesterday. Uh, we have version two of Capsman. Uh, we can see improvements, some uh, new features, and probably we, we are going to see more and more improvements. Capsman version one is already stable and can be used for production. Warning, this is very, very, very important. If we use uh, Capsman ver version one, it's not compatible with version two, Caps. And, uh, and vice versa. And we have to take a decision here. Either upgrade everything or downgrade everything to version one, version one or version two. Uh, and something more important because version two is new, please do not put it on production. You have 500 users relying on this and then, because everything has to be tested. We test it on a small uh, network, and then we put on production. So if there is a bug, an issue, uh, we will be happy if you report it to Microtik support. And uh, they will be fixed. So and a simple setup. A simple setup is that we have a router. Uh, our access points transmit a SSID called OfficeNet. We have to enable the Capsman service, create a bridge, add IP configuration, create Capsman configuration, create provisioning rule, and enable cap mode of the IPs. All this I'm going to show now. Okay, we go to the main router, this that doesn't have any wireless interfaces. It's not an access point, just a controller. And we go to the manager and enable it. Is it clear? Okay. 
So we are have to create a bridge. Why are we creating this bridge? Anybody? Why are we creating this bridge? Okay. We are having a controller, right? The controller will have our network, the LAN, the office net, not LAN. Uh, and we centralize the we centralize all the traffic to the controller, tunnel all the traffic for the reason of having uh, same IPs for the customers and roaming capabilities. So the bridge will have all, I imagine it was a simple scenario that you have four access points. You have to enable, uh, a, you make a bridge, uh, connect on the bridge port one, two, three, four, and the access point will be in bridge mode. So anybody connects to any of the access points will be able to see anyone, right? Somebody. Okay, uh, we create the bridge, we name it Office Net, we add the IP address like we add um, the IP address of the local network of the router. We add the NAT rule so we, we have to masquerade, we have to hide our network, our uh, private IPs uh, and show only the public IP so they can communicate with the public internet and add a DHCP server. Okay, maybe this is not very understandable for the new users. Uh, is anybody ha does anybody have any question? <coughs> okay, let's say that we have a uh, an access point, uh, RB751U, right? Uh, we have to, m when we want to make uh, an access point run on, on the WLAN1, we have to add the IP, add the NAT, masquerade. We have to create the DHCP server, and probably also add the default route, so we can go to the internet. Okay, on the Capsman, we created the configuration for the bridge. And uh, now we have to make configurations that our X points will use, the Caps will use. We give the same name, office net, SSID office. Uh, we choose the country, so we use the channels and transmit power that is allowed by uh, the regulations of our country. Uh, authentication, WPA, WP2. Okay. On this um, presentation, we are explaining only layer three, it means uh, only IP communication between CAPS and CAPSman. IP, IP CAPSman can traverse uh, NAT when required, so somehow it makes uh, some tunnels. The management uh, connection between CAP and CAPSman is secured using DTLS, but the client, uh, the client data traffic is not secured, so we have to create IPsec or uh, encrypted tunnels like uh, SSTP or whatever you prefer. So we have to specify an IP address on the cap that way. On the before we showed how to configure the capsman, right? On the ma on the on the manager on the controller, we enabled just this option. On the cap, the access point we have to specify the IP address of the Capsman. Okay, what if my, my what if I don't have a, a, a rack mounted router and I have a router that has also wireless interface like RB435 uh, or 433 with wireless cards. This is powerful, we can run Capsman with it. And we need to use the wireless interfaces as well. So we can enable Capsman and Cap on the same device and then go on the Capsman addresses and use the local address. This is the local address of, uh, this is valid also on Windows, 
computers. 127.001. Okay. We have to make provisioning rule for every uh, wireless card we have on the, so if we have one cup that has two wireless cards, we have to provision both of them, creating one rule for each uh, interface. We can have slave configuration. I will explain later what is this. Okay, we can check the status of a running Capsman. You, you can see here, this is a running, uh, this is a working interface, running. It's using channel um, one, two, three, four. Okay, no, yeah. Four, channel four, and it's transmitting uh, on G and N protocol at uh, 30 dBm. And these are the rates that are being used. And the cap, you can see that WLAN1, the wireless card, is disabled but it's managed by Capsman. So don't, uh, don't be scared when you see the wireless card car disabled. This is how it should be. The manager is uh, responsible for, for that. Okay, on the registration table, if you have a single access point, there is a registration table. If you have a manager uh, controller for your network, you will see all the registrations uh, of the end user's clients. You can check where are they connected, what is their signal, the uptime, everything like you had on the access point. You can manually provision uh, an interface and this is required when you, you have already uh, when you have already configured a specific cab, you have to remove the interface and pro uh, initiate the provisioning command on the cab. Okay, on the remote cab, you can see MAC IP address. In our case that we don't have MAC, we have always IP address. Router board model, serial number, router OS version, system identity, main wireless MAC, and the state of the cab. State running, a radio count, what does radio count mean? How many wireless cards does the access point have? So some access points have more than one uh, wireless cards and we can use dual band or maybe triple band if we have a third band. Okay, we can create a static cab interface. So interface name or setting does not change after reboot. Uh, when we reboot the, the router or uh, make a change, the dynamic entries that uh, it created, they will change uh, names, they will change uh, values. So if we set a static rule, the, it will override any dynamic rule. Before I was uh, talking about slave, Remember this slave configuration? Okay, this is the way that we can create virtual access point configuration. Uh, what does this mean? One access point can have more than one SSIDs and each SSID can serve a different network. This network is for our guests, this network is for our uh, VoIP phones, this is for uh, I don't know. You can define it. On or what you can see is uh, in many countries, you can go in airports, you can go in um, public places. If they use the same in infrastructure, multiple providers. So you can have four access points, and then you have can have uh, four operators. Uh, delivering service using the same in infrastructure. You understand, right? Okay. 
So how do we do this? We create a new bridge. We or use the same bridge if we want the second SSID to be the same. I mean, we can have guest and guest two, they can be the same, but we can just give two names. Uh, we have to create a new configuration with the way we did it before. Specify the new configuration as a slave and remove all the CAPS interface and again ask for provisioning so it can change uh, the settings on, on the access points. So we have to go here, create a guest net and select data path guest net. This is the bridge that we created, another bridge. And we'll go to provisioning and provision again. We can create static virtual access point like we created before static interfaces. So we don't lose them, the names after the restart, they don't change. Okay, we can create access list. We can say this guy with this MAC address will not connect on my network. This guy with this MAC address will connect. Uh, in this example, we will accept, will uh, allow everybody that has Apple devices to connect. How we do this? How do we do this? The MAC address is uh, defining the the first uh, the first uh, numbers are defining the manufacturer and the rest are zero so with a similar way that we we use subnet mask 192.168.0.0/24 and we can take a range of ip addresses this way with fff and 000 we can take the, the range of MAC addresses. And another rule that all, all devices that are not uh, Apple devices will go to the second rule and ask for the radio server. If we have a radio server, we'll ask the radio server, what are we going to do with the rest? Okay, this configuration overrides. Uh, if we create a channel, it will override, uh, I mean, it's the priority of the configuration, what is more important. Interface overrides the channel and configuration setting. So interface is, uh, if we set frequency here, whatever we the frequency we set on the channel is ignored. And similar with the channel width and similar with any other values. Okay, we, we said something about the communication from the access point to the manager is using DTLS encryption. We have to use the certificates for that. This way we enable it on the CAPSman and this way we enable it on the CAP on the access point by choosing request and enabled. And you see the result here. Okay, uh, about transmit power, we have to set uh, the antenna gain before, before we, started, we, we start to configure anything. We have to go to the cup and say, that this access point has an co uh, antenna connected on it that is 6 dB. And the country regulations, like Philippines, in Philippines is one watt, so the maximum uh, power to be transmitted is 30 dB. Uh, so it will, it will use the 30 dB, it will uh, re re uh, decrease the 30 dB by 6 dB, that is the antenna. So we are on the legal uh, transmitting power. Okay, this is the new part. The new part is that we are showing some redundancy. Okay, what I showed before is that we can have cap one, cap two, cap three, 
cup n, cup n plus one, and a million cups managed by the manager. The manager can be this 2011 router, a CCR, whatever we need, depends in, depending on the size of our network. We can have internet or we can have more than, we can have more networks connected as one. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily to be internet. It has to, it will be an SSID that is connected with the, uh, our uh, VPN uh, at the other end of the planet uh, or could be an, an a network of your selection. Okay, how we make a redundant network? I will show uh, an example with uh, a CAPSMAN on uh, this router and three CAPS, just three. Ethernet two of, uh, Ethernet one goes to the internet, Ethernet two goes to CAP one and Ethernet three goes to cup three and three is connected with cup two and cup with, so I imagine if you lose cup two, you lose nothing. If you lose cup one, cup two can use connection from here to go to the internet, right? So if you lose only one, we're okay. Okay, what do you have to do on Capsman, on the manager, on the controller? we have to create an IP address for Ethernet 2 to communicate with Cap1. We set this address from e on Ethernet 3 to communicate with, with Cap1. Uh, to Cap, no, this is wrong. This Cap should be Cap3, Cap3. Okay, um, with Cap3 and create a bridge interface and add uh, IP address on it. Why are we doing this? Why did we create the bridge and configure this address? We are creating an interface that will be from now on known as loopback IP address. This interface will have our loopback IP address. So we have the IP address that are connecting Cap one with Capsman and Cap three to Capsman, but we will have another IP that it will be reachable in both cases. If any of the links will go down, we can still communicate with this IP because we are using routing. So the Caps will not be the access points will not be communicating with the with the IP that is on the interface here or here, but with a virtual, a virtual interface on the router. The purpose is, the purpose is to communicate, still be able to communicate with the router. Okay. Uh, for this reason, we are enabling uh, OSPF routing protocol that will handle dynamic changes on the network and decide that the link goes down and we have to choose an alternative route. And how do we enable uh, the OSPF? We have just, the, the minimum configuration that we need is to go to networks. Uh, in the backbone area, we are adding all the networks that we are using on this router. The, the networks are this, the, Ethernet on the Ethernet 2 and on the Ethernet 3 that is communicating with CAP 3 and the loopback IP. Okay. Similarly, we have to do on CAP 1 add uh, IP addresses for Ethernet 1. This is RB751U or RB951. So it has five Ethernet, right? and one wireless. We are using Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. CAP 2 is an MAP, and this is MAP. So all, all of the access points that we used have at least, this is the requirement, we need 
to Ethernet, else we cannot continue this network. If we use uh, the, the access point, the CAP, that is for the ceiling, we, we have only one Ethernet, so we cannot uh, make this ring topology network. So, similarly, no, we have to add the loopback uh, interface also here. Why are we adding loopback here also? The same way that if Capsman, lo this manager, uh, loses this connection, uh, we have to be able to communicate on the address um, that is uh, a virtual address and not the address that is on this link. Uh, for this reason, we need to have uh, loopback IP for the Cap1. So we are adding these networks too on the OSPF. The network here and the network here and the loopback. Similarly, we do with CAP2. Similarly, we do with CAP3. And now the third part is to monitor the CAPs. This is maybe more interesting for uh, the more people here, more guys. Uh, so imagine uh, we are in a hotel, right? And we, we are installing one access point per, fl per floor, a small hotel. But we need to know that the, the admin assist, the IT guy of the hotel has to know that an access point has failed, so he can replace it, right? He ha or a power supply failed, or any other reason. Who knows? Okay, so we are using tools, NetWatch. It's a tool uh, from uh, router OS that can send ICMP ping and ping the router, and if it see that it went down, it can run a script. If it comes up, it can run another script. Uh, you can uh, use the loopback address that we have defined before as host. So we are not more monitoring the, the link number one to the capsman, but we are monitoring and the any possibility of routing a connection to the manager. So we will get notification only if both fail. That's what we want. Of course, we can add also the backbone IPs and receive notifications. We can create a different message and say, okay, uh, we lost link one of this access point. Okay, you can use SMS or email tool. Uh, my example shows uh, that if we lose cap one, is it clearly seen by you? Yes. Can you see it? Slash tool SMS sent USB number five for you could be USB number one or USB number two, the phone number, the message, and the my message message equals we just lost cap one we can make another message when it's is getting up so maybe somebody removed uh, from the power so get the uh, the x point so we can call please connect the x point again back if we receive a notification that is up then we can say okay it's okay now and uh, you can use this as e use the email tool for this purpose. You probably don't have, maybe don't have a GSM modem and you want to use email. Or you probably want to do something else. It's a script. There is a suggestion from me, an idea for micro tip development me team. It could be implemented in Capsman version 2. It could be an option to enable monitoring for IP managed caps, one for a group or for all. Since the uh, cap is connected by an IP, by IP, the caps manager 
will always know the, what is the IP of the connected device. So a monitoring could be enabled for the IP cap. A dynamic, a dynamic rule could be created by NetWatch. So on NetWatch, we can have a dynamic entry. And each time we disable the monitoring, the dynamic rule can be re removed. The same option, tab can be configured, can configure the up-down scripts. Okay, this is a suggestion. I don't know if I will implement it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, I would like to, to know. Any comments or questions? Okay, thank you for your uh, uh, patience, for your, uh, I understand after uh, the lunch. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yes, all, all the cups, in, in this case, we use the cups as routers. We don't use le level, yes. Yes. If you lose both of them. Yes. Wait, wait. We are here and you see that, it's okay. Cup one, you l we lose this one. And then this, you lose also cup two. You lose also cup two, okay. Yes. The, these lines are LAN, uh, Ethernet. I chose, I chose models that have more than one Ethernet. This one is uh, RB951 or RB751, as you noticed, and this is MAP, both have two, at least two Ethernet ports. So, okay, if you have, you can do more. You can have devices that have more than uh, two, like this one, and make more complicated setup. So, uh, if uh, you, you can have multiple uh, redundancy. Depends on you, how much you want to invest on the equipment and uh, how many cables you want to have. So, okay, any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the month. Uh, if you need any help, a reliable partner, just contact me for training, certified training in Greek, English, consultancy, solutions for existing or new wireless ISPs, telephony, custom network telecom service solution. Here are my details. Um, inviting the next presenter. <laughs>